received some updated information mm -hmm. from the highway superintendent that was somehow lost with technology. So, um, anyone wishing to make a comment, please um, sign up. And um, when you step to the microphone to the side of the room, please state your name and your address um, for the record. Do that now or? I have a question. Can we speak after the presentation or no, it's a public hearing. So you'll say what you wish to convey. But we won't know if you you don't have a hard copy, so we're gonna see it on the There's screen. The, so how would we know? Okay. I signed it. Oh. I, I didn't know if she the hard copy now. has been posted. Did she say we will like now or after after this? After this. So um Happy to hear your thoughts. We did solicit for questions. Public hearing. Yeah. Okay. Good. Is it on? Is there a little switch on? No, on the mic itself. On the mic itself. On the top. Should we do a little on-off switch? I don't see that. Don't worry for you. Thank you. Good evening. Is it on? Yes, yes. All right. Good evening. My name is Linda Mokari, and I live at 309 Joyce Lane for 21 years, since 2002. And um, I am the owner and the resident of my home on Joyce Lane. And I'm here tonight for something that happened. I had an interaction with Mr. Humphreys. On Sunday, ma'am, this is a budget hearing. Okay, the, so the, the hearing has to pertain to the budget. If it's so, not when do I take my concerns about what happened on Sunday? There, you can come at, uh, to the town hall at another time and, and voice your concern. I'd like this to is do a, it at a meeting where it's a public. Okay, the um, next the next meeting is, is November 14th. Okay. okay, okay, thank, thank you very you. much. Any public comment about the budget, proposed budget? Hi there, Tim Kelly, Griffin Drive, 119 Griffin Drive. I'm a third generation resident here in Hurley. And um, I mean, that interaction was pretty typical of, of what we see down here at Town Hall, just like this budget is. Um, this is what I would call a pretty politically motivated budget. And um, it's very convenient that it's being released, you know, a couple of weeks before, and it's showing all these cuts because, or supposed cuts in property taxes, which are really funded by two hundred thousand dollars in additional state aid. Which how can we know what we're getting next year for state aid? And then in addition to that, um, cuts to the highway department, which I guess now we're blaming on an oversight, which is what we tend to do at these meetings. And then. Um, Basically, we're just going to obfuscate the public, um, which, so we're not going to print any hard copies of the actual budget because it's going to change after the election. This is just a convenient hearing to push forward the McKnight administration's political agenda. I really want to know why you haven't censured Mr. Humphreys like it was recommended in the legal report several months ago. Thank you. Diana, Diana Klein, 420 Fairview Avenue. Yes, it's on. It's on. Okay, so I'm here. I've been a volunteer at the planning board for 15 years. Prior to that, the zoning board. Been through Mike Schultz's administration, Gary Bellows, John Perry. No issues. Always had a planner at our meetings. We're all volunteers. We don't plan. Is this about the budget? Oh, it is, because I want to know where the money is that you haven't paid the planner since two th April 2022, That's not so she's not going to be at the meeting this Thursday night. So that puts me in jeopardy as a, as a volunteer at this planning board. We're not going to be able to conduct any business. But if you haven't paid her since April 2022, where are those funds? And if it's an escrow issue, where is that money? Are we not getting the money for escrow? So we're due money that we're not getting. There's stale checks she mentioned, so that's money that we can't, that we had, we didn't cash, and now we can't cash. So I'm just wondering, 
How is that falling into this budget? What else are we not paying for? What else do we not see? I cannot believe, and then apparently we're not even paying the attorney for the planning board either, but they're still coming. That is just outrageous. That's not a town board issue. The town board bills are getting paid. Um, that would be a town it board is issue because the planning board does not issue checks. But my question is, it's, there must be a budget somewhere. So I'm just very, very curious where this all falls into your budget because it, that's 18 months worth of stuff that's not showing anywhere or is it showing someplace? So any insight you can give me on that, that would be great. Those funds come out of escrow and there is plenty of money in the budget to pay the consultants that need to be paid. But why aren't they paid then? And the money is not in the escrow because she mentioned that there's checks that are stale, means they're more than six months old, that we're not gonna be able That's to pay. That's an issue with the planning board clerk, full stop. Okay, that's the answer. Well, but that would be part of our budget. That would be funds that go into the general fund, so that's why it's budget related. I'm just, I just want everybody to know how crazily furiating that is as a planning board member, because I'm a volunteer, I mean, I'm not an expert in planning and I need that consultant to be at these meetings, and that just you outrageous need to take it for up my with town. Your, you need to take it up with your clerk and your planning board chair. Um, no, I believe that the town board is the one that writes the checks. The town checks. board's bills are paid. But it's part of your budget. That's where this... There's a line item for consultants, yes. But I'm letting you know that you're 18 months off. So how, how great of a budget comes, could this be if you're 18 at, months off? It's escrow. That's what it it's is. It's bills to be paid. Shady Lane. I'd like to, because I didn't know what Diana was going to say, but I'm going to follow up with that because it is a budget issue. Having been in your position, Melinda, you are the fiscal officer. You are responsible for managing the town's finances. So if one of your departments is not functioning properly, and it's impossible that you can't know that the consultants are walking through the door and that there should be bills and there should be checks in your reporting and in your accounting every month. And if you don't see those payments, then there's something that's met, that's you know missing in management. On the other hand, having looked at the budget, I am very concerned that you have potentially over exaggerated incoming resources, whether it be sales tax. Can you be specific, tax. please? Well, if I could have a copy of a current budget that was available, I would be specific. But I find it also unbelievable that it's been posted for weeks. Right. But there are changes and there are, there are lots of there, errors that were in that there, budget from my understanding. So I was anticipating an updated copy and that there would be handouts for the public. So I believe that you have over exaggerated your income on mortgage tax and sales tax having been, well, so, right, public comment. I believe you've over exaggerated. I would like to see what because I couldn't find it in what I saw online, and maybe I missed it, but I couldn't find yeah. any of the changes in your um, reserve fund balances and your unexpended appropriation lines. Oh, and interest? Well, but, and if you were budgeting 25,000 in interest. Okay, well, I still think that that's substantially <coughs> low, but, I think that if you over-exaggerate, being in the real estate world right now, if you are over-exaggerating your income from mortgage tax with the increase in mortgages, that you will be at a substantial shortfall next year. Instead of increasing line, they should be being decreased, is my, and not increased over or decreased over what you were anticipating last year, but what you substantially received. I'm also concerned, <clears throat> it appeared that there were lines missing. Um, I don't know how you can project an 11% decrease unless you have excessive funds that you are using out of your reserves. Because you have a very small town, you have a small amount of budgets. You're, you're dealing with a transfer station, a highway department, the town board, and your, your office is within this building. And I don't see how you can project an 11% decrease without over-exaggerating your income. Thank you. 
Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, Diana Klein again. Uh, one of the items that I had seen, and again, it was hard to follow the whole thing, on your interest and in earnings, 2023 budget was only 25000 2024, it's $140,000. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of what she's talking about. And then in previous budgets, we had unexpended balances of $300,000 in the general fund and the, um, in the highway. You don't have that at all in this 2024 fund. So those would be things that need to be addressed. Is there anyone else wishing to make a comment? You're welcome to. We'll have to go through it one by one just so I can explain to the board exactly what each one is used for. Okay. This is this is his book. This. Yeah. Before you start, I see at the top that it says 2019. Is that an error? On this document that I just received from your department, I guess, appropriations, but is that what you're going to be talking about? No, that, it just says that by that's, that's historical data. That's not, that's historical data off the uh, controller's website, just to show the actual expenditures for the last seven, eight years. Because some, some of the figures that were on the worksheets that I got back had, um, The actuals were not correct. Like last year, on uh, the budget paper that Melinda just handed me, it says that on um, 2022, on repairs contractual, I, I spent only 31,356. But if you look at what we reported to the controller, uh, the figure was 128,286. That's a big difference. So the numbers are skewed in the worksheets, and and what that did in essence is that on on the DA 5110.4 line contractual, um, it, there was an average of the last three years put in for the budget. And that repair line is for everything that's covered under the 284 for, for repairs from um, cover pipes, like the cover pipe that we did on, on Holland Drive a couple weeks ago, like the one we're going to do tomorrow on Flanders. Um, these are all things that we can't anticipate what we're going to be re repairing because we don't know. We're going to be patching potholes through the winter, patching in the spring, in the summer, culvert pipes. Uh, somebody's driveway collapses, we go out, we replace that. So that money that we put in that line for repairs is what we use from May 1st until November 1st. And they, that goes to everything that we do on repairs. And, I, and again, I can't give you a list of what we're going to be repairing because the changes. The change, I could say I'm going to do something tomorrow and I could go in tomorrow morning and we could totally change because something happened and we're going to, we're going to fix that. So that line there, I had, uh, I had proposed bumping to 150,000 from 135. And if you remember, that was the line that you guys wanted to increase to 435,000 back when we were doing the 284 agreement. Um, so I'd like you to take a look at, hard look at that line, and because at a budget of $56,000, we're not going to get a lot of work done, especially with the the increase in cold pipe and the catch basins. And I mean, I'm going to try and buy whatever I can this fall underneath the current. Um, bid list for the county in that so that we have some some materials that we can supplement that with but fifty six thousand dollars won't go far um in repairs line one on that da 5110.1 that's salaries that's the negotiated contract with the union then you drop down to da 5112.2 which is permanent improvements and that's for paving and um, blacktop's gone up about fourteen dollars a ton um, we try to do as much as we can every year. We get, we're promised uh, about $265,000 in the four programs. Chips is the, the majority of it. Then you have POPs, which we have to use or lose, which is a pothole one. And then we got uh, emergency snow, and then we have um, paved New York. So that 265 usually comes back in 
to the general fund and then that goes back in as a appropriated fund balance to feed that line again for next year to try to lower the tax burden. Um, you drop down to DA 5130 personal services, that's the mechanics line. Um, we have a mechanic salary in there and we also um, add a little bit to that because there's times when we put a helper in there and if we have to put somebody in to help him when he's doing heavy work, um, we have to pay that person out of class per union contract and so that the difference between mechanic salary and the HMEO salary gets added on. So I broke it down in that, that summary sheet that I gave you with each of the men. They had several thousand dollars when they went in to help. Um, machinery equipment, <clears throat> mostly for tools. Uh, the DA 5130.4 contractual, that's all the parts that we buy, all the repairs we make on the equipment, the trucks. Um, $75,000, we've, we've already spent 104000 or um, I'll take that back. We already spent 78000 on that sheet that you gave me, um, 78235 and that was the end of September. We probably added 10000 to that or more, and we have a truck in the shop getting a new head, which is going to be rather expensive. So the repairs on the trucks are, are critical, and that line is critical for the highway and for us to serve the public. Um, now you drop down to DA 5140, uh, miscellaneous. We say it's miscellaneous, but in the, the um, controller's office, it's really brush, trees and brush. And um, if you look at the, the historical data, you'll see that we had a couple instances where it was rather high, one being when we had the, the uh, tornado and the ice storm. We did, I think the men did six weeks on uh, brush when we had the ice storm and the tornado. So that line there uh, was cut in half, and that's all part of the salary. So if we don't have the salaries, I don't know if you want to lay off somebody or if you want to cut a position, but you know, all your point one positions on DA 5110, DA 5130, DA 5140, and DA 5142 are all the salaries that were negotiated by your office with the union. I use those salaries. All right, well, you did budget. cut the one. You cut the, the miscellaneous That's one. That's been fixed. Thank all you. Right, then uh, contractual and miscellaneous, um, that, that can go for a multitude of things, the, the cameras and the GPS and the trucks, um, things of that nature. You drop down to snow, again, personal services, the contractual, you put the number in there I had. Um, Snow equipment, there's zero and that, and because that usually comes out of 3H capital fund, and then uh, contractual, and a contractual for snow covers everything from the, the wash screens we get to mix with the salt, the salt, um, any of the the coal patch that we use if we have potholes in the winter time and that, and um, I'm trying to look at the sheet that one was cut also. So I'm just I'm concerned with uh, the proposed budget that I had given you was a, a eight tenths of a percent increase, but that did not include the employee benefits. So when I got the numbers um, last week from you for the employee benefits, which are in red on this sheet, mm -hmm. the budget increased. I think it was 1.82 percent. So I'm just asking you to take a long look at that because really the highway department is the only thing that the residents see for their dollar. Um, they see us out there working and fixing roads and um, taking care of business. So I'd like you to the board to, to look at those lines. And if you have any questions, uh, reach out. Give me a shout. Thank you. Any questions? fund line for superintendent. Um, I'm not sure there's enough in the salary line, the personal services line, to cover the, the salaries and the, 
buy it. I don't know if the insurance buyout comes out of the salaries line or not. It doesn't. Okay. So then you find out. The other one I had a question on was I noticed that this year to date there's been about nine thousand um, dollars spent in that account, mm -hmm. and I never signed a single voucher for that. And um, I'm just concerned that monies are being spent underneath the superintendent line that I've never signed a voucher for. That I don't and I don't even know where that money came from because there wasn't enough money in that account to pay that. So it's been covered, but I hear you. Yeah, I have a question to ask. Am I allowed to now? This thing? Sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to know what the, uh, the medical benefits here. It says two hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars, which is like last year's benefits. Mm -hmm. But every, but if you look at every year from that point up, it's always been an increase. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I understand that healthcare is increasing for the next year. Have we part? Of, have we budgeted for the increase? Yes. It's part of the two hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. But if we. Yeah, uh, it came in. Sh it came in shine that last year. So. Okay. Okay, I, I'd like to address some um, the revenue part of this. I know that's, uh, let's see if I can walk into them at the same time here. All right, so this is going to be hard to see. We'll post this um, tomorrow morning. Um, so I heard concerns about potentially over-projecting revenue. The fact is that the sales tax revenue number that's in the budget was supplied by Ulster County. I took the number that was projected at the 3%, leaving out the 1% extra that the town will receive, so that there will likely be a um, excess revenue in that line. So um, initially, we had budgeted level with this year. Um, which projected at 300,000. We were at 239,000 as of the end of September. We are expecting another sales tax payment. Um, county controller felt pretty strongly that we will um, hit the revenue projection for sales tax. Which is 230? Which is 230. She's even confident we'll hit the 300 this year. Um, mortgage transfer tax. In this year's budget, the projection was $110,000. We've received $116,000 so far. It is typical that we will get another mortgage transfer tax payment. Um, I kept it flat at 110 dollars for next year. I felt pretty confident about that. Interest income. I understand that interest income is substantially higher than it has been in the past. With that said, I contacted the Vice President of Commercial Banking at the Bank of Green County, and he assured me that the interest rate that we are receiving right now at 2.25% on $6.3 million in our savings account will give us $140,000 in revenue. Interest, this year. interest revenue. Uh, so far this year, we have $65,000 in interest. So. What are, they, what are they giving on the three month and six month CDs? Well, that's to be investigated yet. That's so, why I made all my money from yeah. The so that's the next. That's the next step. The town ha doesn't have that right now, but yeah, it's not like in savings. So I always put it in my clay deck, going back to yes. the CDs, and I made, I made like almost four hundred thousand dollars. So I have a meeting with the with the bankers next week. Um, so, I mean, his his thinking again. This is Don McCormick, Bank of Green County. Um, suggested that that 2.25% will likely hold next year um, and potentially increase. So I think for 2024, $140,000 on a balance of 6.3 million is reasonable. Um, so. Does that 6.3 million include, that's all the, the, uh, the age fund, the capital age funds? Mm -hmm. So some of those will, will be depleted. No, I wouldn't think those will be depleted. Yeah, you got a no. million dollars of trust coming in. Yeah. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping that we get it. <laughs> no telling, right? Um, so I'm really looking to the town board to weigh in. Um, are there any lines you feel you want adjusted? Actually, I should back up and introduce you all to Tim Doyle, our, our accountant. 
um, Bonadio group, and um, has been helpful. Yeah, can I, can I offer a little Please. bit? Please. Yes. I mean, I've heard a lot this evening from the public comments, from, um, from the supervisor, um, and I think it's important to note that all of this is constructive. All of this is part of building a budget. The budget that you've seen and it's posted on your website right now is an initial budget. It's the, the first blush of that budget. It's the same as any town village would do. <coughs> initially put out a budget for public comment for people, for the stakeholders, the taxpayers, to offer their thoughts. Um, you know, a, a few things were mentioned today about some of the revenues, and I know we, we spoke in the weeks leading up about some of those same questions that we had as we reviewed it and said, hey, the, the interest income looks very high, right? Okay, there was support for that. There's a reason for that. And, and we know, working with a lot of other governments as well, obviously the environment is such that interest rates are higher, so you would expect it to be up as well. Um, we talked about the fact that the county had projected their sales tax and that number, that's where that came from. Part of the process in building a budget is that initial budget for comment uh, from all the stakeholders, um, tweaks to the budget after they've heard responses and incorporated your thoughts into it as well. Um, and, and when you're building that budget, you're, you're looking at historical actuals and budgets and comparing those and seeing what you think may happen. Um, any known changes, are there any changes in services or, or things that, that maybe additional positions? So if you have known changes, you're incorporating those. Input from your department heads. We, we heard today of, of some updates on some of the numbers from the department heads. That's constructive. That's good. It's important to have those numbers from your departments. Um, and, and then ultimately, contractual is a big thing. Um, in all governments, payroll and benefits are the biggest piece of your appropriations. Uh, as mentioned by one of your department heads, that's contractually agreed to. There isn't a whole lot of play in there. I did hear something about um, one of the numbers being a little large on the on the highway side um, due to some weather events. I don't know if, in fact, you received any FEMA monies for it, any of that, but likely a lot of that was overtime. Um, so, so the fact that it may go down from year to year isn't that a position would be cut, but that maybe there'd be less overtime because there's less events that you're, you're handling. Just, just so you know, unless the county reaches 22 million, no FEMA money. Um, so, and, and then lastly, uh, debt agreements. Uh, you have debt agreements in place that have certain maturity requirements for both principal and interest. You know, that's that's in there as well. You know, the, the contractual, the debt agreements, those are pretty firm. You know what those will be. Uh, some of the other things, you have to make your best estimate based upon the past, known events, things like that. So. Um, in reviewing with, with the supervisor, you know, we, we looked over these and felt like these were good conservative numbers based upon the facts you have. But again, as you receive more input and facts, uh, that the process is that it will change and that it will incorporate, um, you know, your thoughts where it makes the most sense for the town. Thank you. Revenue projections are um, one million eight hundred forty-six thousand one hundred sixty-one dollars. Um, Twenty twenty-two actual revenue was two million two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and where we are year to date, twenty twenty-three is one million seven hundred thirty-nine thousand seven hundred ninety-six dollars. That's as of uh, September thirtieth of this year. That includes highway revenues and general fund revenues? Uh, no, that does not include um, highway revenues. That's all part of the that's, budget? That's just, no, I know. I separated it out, though. I separated it out. I did highway separate. So this is what the salary breakdown looks like for um, just the general fund. This is not highway. Um, safety inspection is 22% of the budget. Um, Transfer station is $123,000. Um, supervisor's office is $103,946. That's three salaries. Um, my salary remains flat at $28,000. Um, 
my assistant and the bookkeeper are um, both actually make more than me. Um, and then there's the highway super. So that's the breakdown of the supervisor's office. I don't want anybody to think that I'm making $103,000. The, the uh, 2024 employee benefits. Um, again, this is just the departments that the general fund covers medical insurance, state retirement, town share, social security, workers' comp, disability, and unemployment are relatively small pieces of the puzzle. And so the projected appropriations. Um, Big ticket items, but also the big revenue producer is the transfer station. Um, highway garage obviously is a large piece of the pie there because there's a paper two facilities. Um, buildings, the the buildings pot piece of the pie um, covers everything: um, electric, oil, um, copy paper, cleaning products, toilet paper, and paper towels. Um, you know, it's a it's kind of a catch-all, along with any you know any repairs that need to be done that are minor um, and things like that. Will, will, um, I cover, will I cover the maintenance person if we ever get them back again, so they can clean the bathroom? And yes. The office. Yes. If we can get some applicants, like we have a we have a job posting for a cleaner, so if you know anybody, get them to apply. Um, Unallocated insurance, we are expecting an insurance increase this year because of cybersecurity. Um, so that that's going up a bit. Um, everything else is pretty, pretty status quo. Yeah, the question is, but uh, yeah. if you go back to the attorney fees, 10.9%, mm -hmm. uh, what about legal fees? That's all, it's included. It's part of 10.9%? Yeah. That includes, like, for example, uh, all the money we spent on like the appeals? For like Duncan and so forth, like hundred thousand dollars. That's all part of the ten point nine. Yeah, yeah, that was all. That was all paid for in in the regular budget. Um, the thing that wasn't included were the federal suits that were brought against the town. That was all paid for by the insurance company. But you're projecting the same thing for twenty four. So that's all attorneys' fees. That's our labor attorney. That's the um, the town attorney. Um, Board. That's also our, it's not the, it's it's some of the planning board, but that's also split with the, the planning board line, contractual line. It's also our special prosecutor who comes and does um, B and T, the town, she's a town employee, so she gets she gets paid out of the town budget. So you have on the budget here something like $80,000 for attorney fees? 85000 yeah. 85000 mm -hmm. Now, part of the attorney fees, that also the legal fees. In that, that yes. separate? No, so. it, that's that's that amount is included. Um, so. We have retainers with with attorneys, right? Our labor attorney is. Right, um, but the others are paid by by the hour. Yes. Well, it, even the labor attorneys are paid by the hour if it's not within the retainer agreement, right? right. Like right. it's right. I mean, you, you get what you no, get. No, I'm saying I'm saying is like uh, how much money did we spend on the appeals for the like like the Dunkin' Donuts for example? We had two appeals. That, that, that was like 100000 No, 25, maybe. 25000 for both? Maybe, yeah. It wasn't, I mean, you'd think it'd be more, but it really wasn't. 25 or 50 each. 25000 Or 50 each is what we were told. We were told it was 50, yeah. We told it was 50000 for each appeal. I can only go by the receipts that I have and how it was, I mean, that's off the top of my head right now. I can go back and give you a better number. Yeah, maybe a year. <laughs> <laughs> There's just like you're not paying. Exactly. What? No. Those are part of the receipts that are not getting paid. No, that's not yeah. true. No, that's not true. That's that's not true. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. All all of those fees have been paid. The town board is. Well, I had a I had a question board on the on the buildings on two two lines. Um, I know that when the union rep and the union came down to sign the contract, they discussed some of the um, absolute needs and. From what they told me, there was an agreement that you were going to heat the old garage to about 50 degrees. Is that true? Well, it's what we're being told we have to do, so... Yeah, for the bathroom and for in order to have water at the trailer and well, everything else. I mean, bathroom, like, really, people shouldn't be in the building. Yeah. No. So, I'm concerned that we've dropped the budget, the contractual budget, down to 130000 when we're already at 170000 
$407 for this year. We had a $248,000 budget, and that was one. And then um, there's no personal services line for buildings, so I'm guessing the maintenance guy would come out of that. There's only 6000 Yeah, there's a little bit. So I don't know if we go back to having a service come in every two weeks or... We can look at that. I was hoping we would get out with yeah, well, uh, it may be maybe cheaper to, to go with the janitorial service. Janitorial service. Honestly, contracting out with third-party vendors is never less expensive. You would think that it would be, but it's not. Well, I don't know how so, much we were paying for it. It was, for the, it was not inconsequential, and the job that was being done was not very good. Well, our maintenance guy wasn't doing a heck of a lot better. No, I, I hear you. So. Um, um, so and the other, the other one was the uh, the garage. Well. I'm going past here, 83310, traffic control. Um, there's nothing in there for equipment, and we're going to be, if we're buying those speed humps, or if we do the speed humps, those are not a repair. Those are a traffic control, so they have to come out of that budget line, so we would have to fund that line. And then the, uh, the equipment and the contractual, um, I think, I don't know, you paid, you paid the contract, contractual um, for the, Speed sign, correct? The digital speed sign? Yeah, that was I don't remember what that was. Was it like? It's a, it's a three year term, I think, 1500. Okay. So you got 2000 on that line. Mm -hmm. And then I go down to garage, which that's where um, our lease and that comes out of. And the lease goes up this year again. It, yeah, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So between that, we've already gotten two oil deliveries. Mm -hmm. And this week we won't be burning any oil because. Temperature's going up, <laughs> thank God. Um, but I think there was a contract in the, in the union contract, you agreed to pay $1,000 for tools for the mechanic. Does that come out of that line for equipment on a garage line? Um, that's a good question. I think okay. so. Okay, we'll look at that. And then... Um, I think that's pretty much all I had. Yeah, I, have I thought there'd be paper copies here, so I didn't bring my copy, so I apologize for having to look on my phone. Um, I think that's all I got. Yeah, well, I thank you. I'm sorry. I'll get it from you later. I got it on my phone for now. Keep your copy. I just I had a question about that, uh, that line also. That's the um, the A sixteen twenty building. Now, the building is contractual. The CE. All mm -hmm. uh, right. We spent uh, so far two hundred forty eight thousand, but next year the only budget one thirty five thousand. So we rolled um, some ARPA money into that line. You remember um, when we bought two vehicles that came? That's the line it came out of. And it was funded with our money. So we did that by resolution. What's the what's the con conservation line? Fifty seven thousand. Is that gonna be for like the, the compactor for the food waste and stuff? No, that's that's um servicing the closed landfill. What is it? Servicing the closed landfill. It may not be anywhere near that, but that's, that's a guesstimate for right now. So we already, that's really all budgets are right around. We already right. signed a contract, right? With green, whatever? For, for compost, yes. Yeah. So where does that come out of? Roughly some garbage contractual? So working with them will reduce our outlay, and the town board approved the contract with them to come out of the landfill um, reserve fund. So the landfill reserve fund, two each. Are you allowed to do that operations out of a It's just it's a one-time contract. We'll, we'll make sure that it's, whatever, figure it out. That's why we have an accountant. <laughs> and an attorney. Toby Carey, Glenford. Um, I, I wonder where in the budget 
things like gasoline and diesel and such for the highway vehicles is located and how we know how much that is. I had asked for that information, but there was very little available. So I'm yeah, curious if that's highway. a separate that, line or a that comes out in uh, May, May to November, May 1st to October 31st comes out of the repair line. Repair. And from November 1st until April 30th, it comes out of the snow contractual line. And if you put in a request for global, um, that's who sells us all our diesel off the OGS bid. Global. I see it. I see it in front of me. It's global something other. That lists all our diesel. And then the WEX card is where we get all our gas. It's a card that every truck has. It's assigned to each truck. And uh, each driver has a number that he punches in. So if they go to Stewart's, they put that card in. They put the mileage of that truck. They put their four-digit code in so we know who's getting the gas. And then WEX processes it and sends us a bill once a month for the gas. The county uses that. And, and we get reduced price on that for, um, you know, for the road to the state road tax. Thank you. So. We were going to do that for diesel, but it's cheaper to buy the diesel from Global. I did a comparison on that, so it's cheaper to get it off the OGS bid. Thanks. But again, that, that is a good case in point that he makes there, because not only are we repairing culverts and up and roads with that repair line, that's also paying for all our fuel, our diesel fuel, and our gas for those six months and then in winter time. I have to look at the metrics again. I, don't, I can't recall off the top of my head. But, um, you know, we're, we're paving and we're plowing. We're doing a lot of diesel. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, can I just uh, clarify? Please. So when there's when there are these sudden shifts, sudden shifts, changes in the budget, where you know unforeseen things, we have to you know the highway superintendent has to do this, that, or the other. Where do those monies typically come from? That's we have to be. Well, let's say for argument's sake, they're no, not a tornado, but something, a, a road, there's a ditch, a road caves in. Where does that money come from that now addresses this emergency? So That's a question. If there's an emergency, a road emergency, uh, um, so look, can I, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. so the the can question your microphone? yeah the question Mike is you know you, you looked at the budget and you said well this is low this needs to be increased because and then you went on to explain that things can happen during the year where there's an increase or there's a there's a, a sudden increase in the budget but you can't project for that you use your I, I assume you use the best estimates that you have, but if something unforeseen happens, what do you do then? How, do, how is the budget addressed then? How do we pay? Well, we, we do our best we can. Like when Felpate Road collapsed, um, I think it was Irene, um, Felpate Road collapsed and it washed out. And we were able to, that happened when I was in office as supervisor. And that, that issue right there, we were able to actually get some FEMA money because the county reached the threshold and FEMA paid for that rehabilitation of that road because it was rather expensive. So no, no I'm not but talking about... But if it doesn't cover FEMA, then it comes out of my repair budget. So if, if the budget, if you're in excess, if the... I mean, the payroll's there already. The payroll's no, I'm not set. talking about payroll. But if we need, if we need a lot of, uh, you know, big gabions or rocks to, to stabilize a bank or... Um, something else to that nature, it's going to come out of the repair line. If I don't have enough money, then i got to come to you all. Because so that if, budget is set for the repair line. So I understand. 150000 that I So let me ask Melinda the, quest, the follow-up question. So when that happens, where typically do we receive, for him, for the highway superintendent to make those changes? Say, for example, $100,000 is needed. It's not in his budget. It's going to be in our budget, budget somewhere. Where would it come from? It would come out of reserve. Yeah. How much is our reserve? We have 2.1 million in an unassigned fund balance, 
and we have 6.3 million in um, earmarked capital improvement funds. So you're saying that if there's a, a, a massive swing in his budget, there's likely going to be available funds to cover this. Yes, shortfall. we can always appropriate okay. funds. Okay, that's what I wanted to get. I'm right about that, right? <laughs> that's correct. And you have to wonder what was the reason for that sure. swing? It wasn't something that was unexpected and yep. significant yeah. that you could not have expected, or yep. is it just a shortfall? Short, or? yeah. And that, and that yeah. note, I would, I would suggest putting X number of dollars instead of, instead of anticipating CHIPS money for revenue, mm -hmm. because under COVID, they took 20% of that away overnight. Yeah, I understand. So maybe it'd be better if we appropriated two or $300,000 of that reserve fund for the budget instead of putting that revenue way up. And then if that revenue comes back, then we put it back in and keep that appropriated balance going. That's why we're having, that's why we're having this conversation. It, you know, I, I didn't include any um, fund balance in the budget because I wanted to have a discussion with the town board. Right. I think we used to put it in there because yes. the town funds $300,000 for right. permanent improvements. Right. And so in essence, they always try to take and appropriate that balance at the end of the year. And then any other money that was left over, they would put into you know, 3H for equipment or anything in the highway. Mm -hmm. And I did notice that some of the lines, that, another thing I want to mention that I was going to talk to you about was the um, like this year, we sold a truck and an excavator. It was about twenty, twenty some thousand dollars. And you know, does those monies go back into the three H or does it go? Because normally, the unexpended funds would go into townwide storm. Like in you know the three years that we did those big projects, mm -hmm. there wasn't a lot of repair work because I had half the crew doing that. Right. But then at the end of the year, I had all those monies left over that would go back in and re replenish that townwide stormwater fund. So that's why we, we tried to perpetuate that, so we were always able to go and, and get those things done, whether we did them in-house or we contracted it out. Mm -hmm. So yep. just make good budget sense. Absolutely. I have one more question to ask. As the issue of those funds, those um, undesignated funds, and there was a conversation about interest-bearing instruments that we can apply. Mm -hmm. So typically those interest bearing instruments would be running on one month three months six months mm -hmm. probably three six yeah mm -hmm. three or six or one year cycle so if there is a problem on his end we can always make an adjustment there i mean we might have to lose money depending but there could be an adjustment all i'm trying to do all i'm trying to say here is that if there is a problem and we can't cover the budgeted allocation, there's a mechanism to allow us to appropriate funds from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm, we have a significant fund balance that we can tap into if it is needed. So all we're trying to do here, in my estimation, is to try to get the best budget in line that we can get. And that's where your comments come in. That's where you, the, the public, has to make, you know, have make some input. Um, so that's my, that's my, com that's my comments. Well, I, I know that the engineer met and he suggested uh, that we're going to have to bond for these drainage projects that we've got going on. So, if, you know, the, the town-wide stormwater could eat up that that uh, fund balance rather quickly. I, I don't know, did you get any bids in yet at all for Kimball Terrace? No. I'm a little nervous on what these bids are gonna come back in, at, given what I've seen at some of the other towns. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we have, what do we have left in the stormwater? Around 800. Yeah, so that could be, that's not enough to do even Wildwood and, and Kimball Terrace. So, um, you know, if you start doing a lot of these drainage projects, Brittany and Arnold and all the other ones we're talking about, we can't do everything all at once. Right, so that's what I'm saying. So we don't want to bond. You know, if we bond, then, then we're going into debt and we're paying interest on it. Right. So. Thank you. Melinda, what is the fund balance, projected fund balance for this year? In other words, like what we appropriated last year and how much is left over of that money?
Um, it's it's on your budget forms. I have the 9-30-2023 actual. So currently currently we've spent one million five hundred twenty one thousand seven hundred and eighteen dollars and our total income um, our total twenty twenty two income I mean twenty twenty three year to date where's that slide there we go our total revenue thus far this year, as of the end of September, was one million seven hundred thirty-nine thousand seven hundred ninety-six dollars. So. And that's for three quarters out of four. Yes. All right. And what did we spend so far? One million five hundred seventy-one thousand. No, five hundred twenty-one thousand seven hundred eighteen dollars. So it's much cheaper. That's just out of the general fund, right? Yes. So we have probably two hundred thousand over budget. We have 200,000 roughly more revenue than we have spent. In, in three quarters of a full year. Right, right. So the possibility of having like 300,000 to 400,000 if, if it goes this It's way. conceivable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're going to take all that money and put it in, uh, not, and not uh, put it back in for next year at all? That's, that's the town board's decision. I didn't right. want to presume I'll... to do that okay. without talking with you all. And this is the conversation we would have had if I had not been sick that first okay. Right. Needed. Right. So can we talk about it now then? Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Uh, I would like to see some of that fund balance go back to the, uh, the lower the tax rate. You know, like it last year, it next won't year. affect the tax rate. The taxes are staying flat. So we can roll that money back in, but the taxes are what they were this year. All right, but I'm, I'm just saying, for example, like uh, 2023, we put $600,000 back mm -hmm. into, uh, into next year's budget, more or less, from uh, uh, 2022. It went into the fund balance, and then some of it was used to defray, yes. Are we also taking that fund balance and like fill, and, uh, at least refilling the uh, capital 19H fund for uh, drainage? Where we had it yeah, we do that by resolution every December. Okay, all right, and, and we're planning on doing that uh, in December. We do it every December. We did it last time. Okay. We did it last year. Um, so if we, bring, if we bring some of the fund balance uh, uh, from this year into 2024, therefore the uh, spending itself, the appropriation. That'll amount. increase the budget amount. It'll increase the budget amount and give us more money to work with. I, I didn't see the resolution. So. In December? Yeah, I never. I looked for it and I couldn't find it. And, uh, well, we did it. It was. The accounts, where the money went, and where the highway money went, all well, the chips money. Was that transferred to 3H and Stonewater? Or it should have been. It was written. It was written with the former accounting firm. So I didn't, you know, I didn't write that. The other accounting firm did. And Mike, oh, during that period, Mike, during well, that she, period, with help, right? During that period of time, you know what we were dealing with with the clerk's office. Yeah, things were kind of bumpy around here. So we're um, still, we're still trying to figure that stuff. That was one of the things we spoke about a couple years ago. Yes. About yeah. the administrations. Took all the chips money and we never saw any of that going into 3H and that's why our yeah. fleet went yep. completed. Yep. And I want to make sure that those monies are staying with highway. We will make we will make sure and, of that. And yes. You know, so that we don't have to go um, to the taxpayers' pocket all the time to get new trucks and because they're getting more expensive by the yeah. day. Yeah. So I, I think it would be good if that resolution was could be pulled up. Yeah. So from December so that Yeah, I'm looking for it now. Yeah. I, I don't know where it, I know. It's a, it was some kind of a minefield, right? If it's possible. So I'm, I'm, I can find it and get it to you. You know, I mean, we all, we all, I mean, I remember we all had it and I heard it on it. So, um, okay. Um, is there any, do you all agree with what Mr. Bombs is suggesting? You want to roll that excess into the budget for next year and then and then it'll increase the amount of spending, right? That's what's the plan for the spending? Yeah, what's, yeah, what's, what's the, the plan, plan if we, if we no, use no, that I'm money? Say, I'm not why saying that. that? No, I'm not saying increase the spending with it. I'm saying is why, why can't we just reduce uh, the taxes then? The taxes aren't going up. Taxes don't go up. The, the taxes are flat. Well, why you want to lower the taxes? Well, well, I 
if you have all this, if you have this fun balance back, then, why not then? I'd like to have Tim weigh in here. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, sure. Two, two comments. Um, one of the things I was just sort of pondering as we we're looking at the slides here is that um, that one of the things you have to take into account too is that the nature of local governments is that you receive your property taxes at the beginning of the year. And at that point, all of that revenue is recognized. Mm -hmm. So while you may be ahead right now, that's going to fade towards the end of the year. Because you have all of your revenue now, you're going to continue to have your expenses. So I, I would caution against necessarily thinking that you're going to have $300,000 at the end of the year because you do now. It would make sense that it would tend to fade. So I would, I would put that out there. Um, the other thing, I, we've been involved in several budget meetings this month and, and in, in the upcoming months. And one of the things we've been cautioning people too is that um, Comptroller DiNapoli had put out a statement in July that he did hold the tax cap at 2% despite the fact that they recognized that uh, the inflation factor is almost 7%. Yeah. So what we have cautioned folks in terms of decreasing property taxes is that um, your costs are going up. And even if you hold everything flat, you're in essence going backwards. So we do caution, you know, from a long-term perspective, reducing those amounts, you're, you're eating into your fund balance, and you still have inflated uh, appropriations or expenditures. So um, it's obviously a decision each board has to make themselves, and, and what's, what's good short-term, long-term, but with inflation at, you know, almost 7% and you're you're burdened by a tax cap so you'd have to override the cap to go if you were going to even match that um, we suggest that you should at least hold flat or uh, even consider some increases I pulled up that resolution and it shows that uh, there was no unexpended fund balance for the highway last year it says that there was uh, decreased four lines by 72,800 and an increased six lines by 72,800. And one of them was snow contractual 32,000. And I don't remember ever spending $181,000. I don't have that on my, on my paperwork. I had $129,000 that we spent in contractual under snow last year. So. I have to I have to look at some of those lines. We'll go back and look at the end of the year figures because something's not something's not jiving. Because okay. when I look at this, when I look at open book, it showed that I had 100. And, uh, I think it was like 129, 130 thousand dollars in unexpended funds in that. But there's no resolution in here if that was the case of where that money was was transferred to. We did transfer, but we'll look at that. All right, because that, that, that means the minutes would have to be corrected. I have no comp for the comments on the budget as it exists. Um, 
you know, we can we can talk about what um, uh, Councilman Bombs is talking about, but I, I have no other comments to make with respect to this budget. There there might be some changes that we're talking about when it comes to the highway, highway. department because this is a new document that we haven't received. So maybe we can make some adjustments with respect to that, but otherwise I don't have any more comments. Um, can we workshop this now and... Um... And include it? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah if you'd like to do that, that'd be... Yeah. I would. Okay. Um, okay. When, okay. When we do this, my, my so, suggestion, if I may, would be to go through the budget that I did, which was less than 2%. And uh, offset it with some of the uh, unappropriated fund balances there, and then uh, let me be frugal with it so that I can sit there and, and uh, you know work with the board on our expenses for 2024. Okay. The other thing I would ask, since you brought up frugality, is sorry. And you can just talk into the microphone. The other thing I would ask is, um, since you brought up frugality, is if you could also look at that for the um, highway garage line because there's a lot of money on that line that is more than just rent. Um, we're paying electric and oil on two buildings. Any supplies that you need for the buildings are going on that line. So uh, there have been supplies that have been charged to, um, to buildings line, the 1620 line, that aren't to go on the 1620 line. So um, they've been submitted, and, and the expectation has been that we would pay them. So we've sent out for them, but we haven't signed anything. It's been, been put down. Right, but those are the things that go on on the garage line. If there are things that are for the garage, that's so where they go. Right. So um, if there's anything that you can do to help you know, reduce the amount of outgo on that line. Um, that would be great because then we can actually increase the highway superintendent's contractual line. Mm -hmm. You know, well, I'll have that um, sure. yeah, I mean, I had supplied um, some information about insulation that you can, you can add to the inside of garage, garage doors. doors and things. So anything that we can do to reduce the amount of outlay because we all know oil is expensive. So. Yeah. So, I mean, if we can cooperate on that, that would be a step in the right direction. Um, does the town board want? Anytime you want, just send a memo. Okay. And I post it on the board, and I, I discuss it with uh, you know those the mechanic, Michelle, and the foreman and the deputy, and all on the same base. Okay. Um, does the town board want to adopt the budgets as submitted by the highway superintendent? I, want, I have a couple questions. Okay. Um, on uh, the right glasses on. On five ten, uh, fifty one ten four. You want it to one hundred and fifty grand. Um, you've never come to that high ever before, and you talk about culvert pipes, ordering culvert pipes and catch basins. Um, I see that we have probably between the first area and the back area, we probably have, if you put it end to end, half a mile worth of culvert pipes already there. You've already got a half, half, half a mile worth. And of all the different sizes, um, I don't know why we would need more. And I know we have some catch basins. Um, I would like before this is approved, I would like a basic uh, list of what you have and how much you have of it. Because, you know, I see a lot of this culvert pipe up there literally growing in the weeds that's not been paid for by the town and not being used. I'd like to see it being used. Um, the other thing is, Mike, what, what, what are the reasons we have to keep the highway heated? What, what the oh, other? The Doug, you mean the Doug Hill garage? The Doug Hill garage. You want to have a bathroom for the transfer station, guys? Could a heating coil be put on the pipe that comes out of the cement through out to the outside to the to? Were well, you in another meeting with the union? 
I wasn't there. The supervisor was. She could I, speak to the meeting with the union. There's a way to keep that line from freezing with heating coils. It's very easy. The other thing is, so what else? Because then you have a bathroom in there. You know, you have a nice trailer, actually, that's safe and doesn't have mold in it. They should be using that anyway. So no, what... We're going to trailer. That's transfer station. Wait, wait, wait. wait if, if, hold on, hold on Peter. I, I just... I want to make sure that, I, you know, I mean, if you get into the specifics of each one of these things, it's going to be very difficult for us to follow. So, I well, mean, if you're suggesting that we, that these numbers change, are you asking? Well, we're asking to, we're, Melinda's asking to accept this, and I think, I think there's ways to cut these, like that one, down. I'm not saying all. So that's, that's, you're talking about. Uh, repairs contractual. Repairs and contractual. Repairs contractual. So, okay. so Mike is proposing 150. Yeah. I, can I jump in here? Sure. I'm sorry. No, I actually amended it to 135. It says 100. 50 on the one I got. Me too. Yeah, um, that's okay. Cool. Here's the thing. I did, um, so thank you to the highway superintendent for providing us um, historical data from 2016. I took the liberty as we were sitting here of um, adding up these numbers over seven years, so 2016 to 2022 actual, and um, the average amount of money that we're spending is $86,713.14. That's an average over seven years. Um, the ask is for 150. Which she um, just up corrected to 135. 135. But that's part of it. I'm still, I'm still wondering. Like I go through the vouchers, and I check for the repairs and the work that's being done out of house. I've literally seen which there might be a reason for it, I don't know why, but I've seen oil changes being done out of, out of the building. I also saw one that was for almost eight or nine hundred dollars for a, for a loose solenoid line that literally cost five dollars, seven dollars, maybe seventeen to repair. I'll, I'll, I'll put it into you for purchasing. You can go out and get the, get the prices. I, I'm just asking why we can't do this work in house, like why can't someone cheaper, fix a solenoid line? It's cheaper for us to take a smaller truck down to the dealership and have them do an oil change than it is for us to buy the oil and the filter and do it in house. You Absolutely. you did buy 55 gallon drums of oil, have you not? Yeah. Yes. So you have them. Not not for the gas engines. You can you? Well, then then honestly, why wouldn't you? Because that would save us money. Peter, Why this is. Have that much wait, hold on, Peter. Peter, this is gonna, this is gonna take us in in a direction that we don't want to. Yep. Well, it's, I'm it's, just, I want the so, board to understand. No, I get, think that, we get it. But if we, if we, if he's proposing one hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars from a, a actual expenditure in twenty twenty-two of one hundred and twenty-eight thousand dollars, and we know that their things are going to go up, is that a reasonable ask? I, which, I would say no. I think we need to go through the vouchers, and I can show you where yeah, but this we should have up. saved money. But if, if we're looking at $128,000 already expended, so that's $7,000 difference. Do you understand what I'm saying? That, am I not making I'm, sense here? I'm, Even if you, if you just simply take that 128 and you add like 5% inflation or something like that, then you wind up with very something very close to 135. I mean, Easily. I know what you're talking about in terms of how everything is being costed out this way and that way, but you know, from a macro standpoint, I think we have a lot to do here, and it would be. Well, I don't have it. I don't really have a say in it at this point in time. No, you have a say, but I, what I'm saying well, is, I'm that just trying to explain. No, I, I think we I get hear it. You. I think yeah, we okay. get it. I think we get it. But the problem that we're running into is that. There's an expenditure, if this is correct, which I know it is, of $128,000. And so, if why did it all of a sudden jump up in the last two years since we've been here? Well, weren't you doing something like drainage those other years? And that, and yeah, 2020 and 2021, that was, like that I was said, COVID. Yeah, yeah but that's the big drain projects. All your gravel, all your pipe, all your cash basins, all your it's equipment COVID. rental, all comes out of 14H. Right. Then when we end the year, we have that money left over. And Repair line, and that goes back 
back in, and then you guys get to replenish that account by spoon water. Right. Can I make so a, it's really not. Unless we go out to bid, and watch. then it costs us more. I'd like to make a motion, Madam Chair. Can I make a motion that we accept the $135,000 that uh, Mike Schultes, has, the, the superintendent, has proposed, has offered as an amendment to the current, what he originally asked? Yep, yeah, you can make that motion. Is there a second? I second. Any discussion? And so, yes. Now go to wait, 51 wait, wait, no, wait, machinery. Hold on. We're just, let's you know what? You can't be, make me quiet no, when I'm talking to no, you. Stop. Wait, wait, wait. wait. No, there's a, there's, Peter, there's, 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 there's a motion and a second on the thing. table. You have to focus on this thing. one line. It's just one thing we're looking at now. That the $150,000. Okay. That's all we're dealing with right now. All right. I still think it's high. One hundred thirty-five thousand. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at the average of eighty-six. So, I mean, I don't. You know. Again, you got to take into consideration the inflation that we've had in the last fifteen months. Sure. Guardrail went up three hundred percent. We actually were able to replace six sections of car hit the guardrail on Boyce Road. And today, I had the crew up there yesterday and today. We rebuilt the shoulder up. We pulled the stakes out and pulled them straight. They didn't get bent, and we were able to reuse all that guardrail. Build the bank bucket. How much guardrail we have left? We got some up there, but we're not not everything we need to replace. So when we go to do it, um, what's you know the county what, will work with us. And can 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 we, can we let's all can of the we vote let's on all of the um, guide rail that's down in the back in the brush in buried in the brush. Is that old? Is that usable? What is that? Can we vote on this motion? No, I'm asking a question. So, but it's a budget meeting. If you want to go into inventory stuff, put on inventory. Is is it usable? Can you tell me that? Oh, we're gonna look at it. Do you, do you have you seen it? I absolutely have. So, yeah, would you, are you saying so we need to buy more? There's there's a motion and a second on the table. Yeah, let's, let's with you need oh. to stop retaliating against the highway department. Here. I love the highway department. No, you don't. You retaliate for two years now. So we're guys, that's not, that's not, that's not, that's not, that's stop. All right, this is not the forum for this, folks. This isn't about. I'm so, asking honest stop about questions. It. Like Bob Newhart in that show, just stop. No. Stop the retaliation. It's not stop retaliation. That's, right, right, that's, get on this is exactly folks, that's, the budget. that's not what. That's not what this is. It's so. There's one. I just request that the board oh. increases the the repair line and the mechanics line for truck repairs. Or so we're be in trouble. So, with that said, Mike. Thank you very Mike, much, Mike. Mike, we're about to vote. Mike, Mike we're Hold about on. to Hang vote on, on the resolution, and we have another resolution that's coming. Could you just please that wait? That has to do with. Well, I'm not going to be attacking retaliation against Mike. Well, right, yeah. well, this is an attack. I'm asking honest to God questions. Yeah, well, no, you're not. Yes. Yes, I am. You're vote. talking about buying things all that I see we have. I'm all doing in, my job. Can we vote? All in favor. I'm retired. I'm going to run for Highway Department. Peter, maybe I'll learn a thing or two. Aye. Aye. I abstain. I'm for it. All right, motion passes. Okay, now what's the next issue that you wanted to bring up, Peter? The machinery contra contractual. Okay. Oh, uh, wait, first, permanent improvements on DA 55112 to increase that again. Um, I actually read an article about uh, the city of Kingston in the Freeman about his highway superintendent, how he he literally says, and it's a quote unquote, that doing paving is the is 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 ridiculous to do without fixing the drainage first, because drainage is what's destroying most of our roads. So are you are you? Um... I would like to see money. Most I would like to see the paving kind of slow down. Like we've said, I've never had anyone come to this town board crying or screaming about a pothole. But our drainage issues, that's not only flooding people's houses, it's also destroying our roads. And we're having to put everything out to bid because, because, um, fill in the blank there. Um, does the town board want to stick with the 300 that we've always um, allocated or do you want to go to 350, which is what's being asked? If you want to drop it. What do you what do you all want to do? Well, there's going Why to be. Why did you raise it to three fifty, Mike? Because of the increased cost of asphalt. Yeah. It's gone up about fourteen dollars. 
So. I can't best estimate. I mean, we, we need guidance here. I mean, yeah. Three, 350. Uh, case in Point Marlboro did exactly that. They stopped paving roads years ago before uh, Gail after stood in, and the roads were in such dis disrepair when he stepped in. They had to go out and bond to get the roads all back up so that they were safe. If you drive around the roads, look at them. Look at what we call alligatoring. Alligatoring mm -hmm. is when there's cracks, Mike, all like the back of an alligator. And Mike, <laughs> what what is your best estimate? What do you project to be the increase in costs for asphalt going forward in 2024? Best estimate. If, if things break loose in the Middle East, all, all bets are off because asphalt is the best direct. Best estimate. Best estimate. We get $265,000 reimbursed from the state. Yeah. So. I would like to leave it pretty much at that. Just on the fact that we can, then the budget allows more money for them to help us with some drainage issues. I mean, is there is there a scenario that would allow for the highway department to help the town resolve some of the long-standing drainage issues that we're encountering? We've been doing one every year. We've been nonstop. That's all we do. And there's drainage all summer long. We've devoted since I've become superintendent in 2018. We've devoted the summer construction season to drainage. This is the first year that we didn't do a big drainage project, and it was because the deputy supervisor blasted us at an October meeting and said he didn't want us doing drainage projects anymore and called the highway guys a bunch of idiots. So we didn't do a big lie. drainage project. I don't, I don't recall that, that, that taking place at a lie. meeting. Um, I, absolute can, lie. I, I think we need to. So, I mean, can, can we I've been doing drainage projects. Yeah, can we stick to the budget? Year. I started with Sherrill, Orchard, Wall Street, Park Drive, Chestnut. Uh, we finished up Hickory last year. We saved the, we saved the town over a million dollars on those projects. Well, we need to talk about Chestnut. Mike, Mike, I, I, so. I think I'm going back to the issue again. Yeah. Best estimate, you're asking for $350,000. There's $300 that are proposed. Best estimate. What do you think the increase is going to look like in 2024? Best estimate. I haven't gotten anything from them. All I know is that it fluctuates. Again, asphalt is the byproduct of, of refining of crude. Yes. Yeah. And they were bringing it up from Venezuela. Um, but do you have any idea of how much it increased between 2022 and 2023? $14. It was over 10%, it was about 11%. 11%. So we could project reasonably an 11 percent increase. Like I said, if you want to keep it at 300, we get 265,000. We don't want to lose that. Funding. What do you guys want to do? We have to spend that money just in order to, to get keep... back from DOT. I understand that, oh. but I'm trying to I'm trying to get to a figure here so that can, we can move on. Can, we, can I make gonna, a suggestion we're, here? We're going to pay what we can pay, not above the budget. And we've we, got 350 over here. We've got 300 over there. Why don't we just meet at 325? He just said 10 percent increase, yeah. so we're looking at about 330 thousand right. dollars. 330. That okay. means the same that amount of paving that we're doing now when we really need to be working on drainage. You've been to our meetings. What, they're 90 percent about drainage. Issues. Are you suggesting that we hold it at 300 thousand? Yes. Okay. Well, there's a motion. Is there a second? I second that motion. To hold it at 300 yeah, yes. Yeah, Mike said yes, 300,000. Okay. Peter's recommending 300,000. All right. Okay, let's do it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So carry. Next issue, Peter. Just remember, we're going to pay what we can pay, and what we yeah. don't pay goes back into your mm -hmm. hands at the end of the year. Right. And yeah. you do as it needs to be done. Machinery contractual. Contractual? Yeah. Machinery contractual. Can you explain that to me, Mike? The machinery contractual line. I'm sorry. The, your machinery, machinery contractual. Machinery contractual, you're proposing 150000 That's the repair on all the trucks. Yeah. Are, are we getting new trucks this year in 2024? Hopefully. They're supposed to go on. The assembly line on December, but that's never a given. I know Ulster just got their new Western Star. They waited uh, two and a half years. 
Yeah, we approved those purchases yeah. last year. We got two in the pipeline. So. We, we, uh, yeah, but it means that we won't have expenditures on, on, on repairs. On repairs. Right. right. Okay, I'll give you a case in point. My, my truck, no heat in it. So I have the mechanic, he's working feverishly to get truck 10 done. He's been doing it all in house, doing a wonderful job. Um, truck 10 is one of our mountain trucks, it's a four wheel drive, six by four. The wing that does all the mountain runs down here it does Canary Hill, does Hill Pick, does Eagle's Nest, um, does the heights. And we've had to go from the front bumper to the back bumper on that truck. We painted the entire frame. We had to replace the part that Peter was talking about uh, that we have to get from the dealership. That everything we buy anymore is a thousand dollars. But he's done a great job. But then my truck today, I had the problem with the heat, and I took it over to Sawyer Motor to check it out because they're busy in the shop preparing for winter. My. He came back with a price to replace my truck for $8,400 because the transmission pan's leaking, the oil pan's leaking. Uh, so I'm, I'm really, really trying hard here to get to numbers so that we can finish this budget. You know, I really want to, I mean, there's a proposal, $150,000, and the budgeted amount but 2024 is 75,000, and you're proposing that we go back to an original, the 2023 budget of $150,000. I would try to keep the same because the, the again the parts have gone crazy. I just gave you an example: the part that we have to buy for the paper, little little micro switch that turns the order off and on for the blacktop. It's not working. I went down to Hoffman. $600, so it's, I mean, it's crazy. But Can I ask question. another question? Is it, likely, is it likely that we'll get the new trucks this year, in 2024? Yes. Okay. So I'd like to propose, I'd like to, this is what I'd like to propose, that we move this 75,000 to 100,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, because what I'm thinking this 150,000 would be dealing with is the maintenance on these trucks. And if we have new trucks, the maintenance is likely to go down, at least for the, for the next year. Hopefully. Well, God well, it should yeah, be guaranteed. Yeah. Uh, it would be on the warranty, right? right. Yeah. yeah, okay. So my proposal is that we move this to $100,000, and that would be my motion. Mike, would that be acceptable? 100000 That's kind of low. It's kind of low. We're, we're probably at 100,000 right now, actual. I mean, we were. Uh, yeah, well, September. yeah, yeah, 100. Well, that was. 150 was what you. Yeah, what's uh, the actual? I'm trying to look for what Melinda gave me the actual was for September, and I'm not certain that's. She's, she has it as uh, 78,000. And I can guarantee you, we're up over 100,000 right now. That was all. That was including all of the receipts that I had in right. my hand for the end of September. Right. We're, we're in October now. You've been working on truck 10. For a lot more I understand. Time. I haven't. I didn't take into account October. I, yeah. you know. Truck 17 is in getting up ahead right now down at the Eagle. Uh, that's been in there for three weeks. My motion still so stands. I'd, I'd like, like to make a motion. 25 instead of 100. I don't want to. So let's say 110. And hold on. Again, whatever doesn't get spent comes back to you. Um, I, I have a I have a question. The contractual line. Is this include every time these trucks go out and get work done? Yes. I know for a fact there's a lot of things on there that could be done in house. For instance, I just brought the one you know, up, oil change. That's a simple one. Now. You know for a fact that a lot of that work can be done in house. You can't. You're, if, if our mechanic can't change oil. Then we got a problem. Peter, what don't you understand? When I send a truck out for 1040 oil gas engine, it's cheaper to send it down to Begnal than it is for him paying him $31 an hour to do an oil change so can we in our shop to buy the cases of oil and a filter. It's can cheaper. We on this? Yeah. If we go if we go back down to 100, I'll be okay. Mm -hmm. Peter is suggesting that we go to 100. What are you all comfortable with? Mike. Well, I, I think with the, you know, Mike's a professional. I mean, he knows better. And I would think if he's uh, suggest, uh, what is it, 130 you suggested? No, he's saying 110. 110? 
No, I said 125. You said 125. Right. Actually, Do I hear 125. No, the problem is, is that you never know. I mean, these older trucks. Yeah. Well, here's, here's we, the thing. We can blow a motor this, this winter on one of the trucks. And I don't understand. Here's, 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 the the thing, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you go 125, but you don't spend it at the 125, it comes back to us. Correct. It's governmental budgeting. you got to zero everything out at the end of the year. Right. I propose 125. I agree. There is no way that's correct. There isn't. Well, there's a motion on the table. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. For 125? Yes. For machine work. I have something I want yes. to say before we vote. Well, we're going to have discussion. Go ahead. Mike, you say bonds. You say that Mike is the expert on this. The thing is, is out of anybody in this room right here, as far as mechanics and work and trucks and repairs and cars, it's me. But the only problem is he was elected as a, as a superintendent of highway. This is not getting us anywhere. Well, yeah. well, what I'm trying to say is I, this isn't personal. This is stuff I know. You and I stand by it. Trucks. Yeah, yes, I have. I was in charge of race haulers and the whole works. Yeah, I know. Would you have a hauler? Do you hold around? Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, I'm like, sorry. I'm 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 sorry. I I've done. I've built my own diesel motors in my business. I know that's your I intention. I, I, so there's a there's a motion and a second. All in favor. What are we? What number are we at? One twenty-five. That's crazy. Yana said one twenty-five. Okay. <coughs> Anything to make a motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I abstain. No. Do I? So carry. Okay. Um. So miscellaneous. Uh, the request is for 66000 up from thirty-eight five. dollars um, That's a contractual. That's contractual. That's a no, that's, a, that's, that's miscellaneous. 51 PS. Yes. That's, that's a personal. Payroll. That's Why? payroll. That's, yes. So are we going to accept that $66,000 number? Yeah. yeah okay. Mike, yes. Isn't that what you brought, brought to the, you brought that to the town board? Right. That there was an, a, that, that, that was number was incorrect. Yes, that's a contractor. I, and if I could, if yes, you could that was a, a copy of the signed contracts. I it's six, sixty-five six. Oh that, yeah, we just got those in the mail. There was a three percent increase when I did the original budget, and I found out there was a dollar increase per year. Yeah. And I didn't know that, so I had to revise my numbers. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we just got those from the union in the last week. Um, okay. So Miscellaneous this, contractual. Are we going to ten? Wait. So we're going to sixty-six on the on the first. Yes. One? Okay. So let's move along. Point four contractual. The yeah. ask is ten thousand. The seven-year average is fifty-five eighty-four. Just for reference. Can I Not just get an understanding what the what what is this? Can I this what? What? So much That's time. a lot of camera and GPS. It's in all trucks. Okay. Right. Yes. Does, does Niner give us a, a discount? Seven twenty ten percent. They didn't have a mechanism to do that. I can go back at it and ask them. Yeah. Um, okay, so that, that snow PS line, you revised it up because that 322918 was the number that I received from you originally. Yeah, I, round, I usually round them off to the nearest so spot. Okay. All yeah, right. That's fine. So that's not so much different. Just easier for budgeting. Snow contractual. Um, so what's currently proposed is 117,000. The ask is for 180,000. Um, oh, okay. We didn't really have any snow last year, so. Yeah. I'm just concerned. Last year we used over a thousand tons, 1,200 tons just in February for the ice storm. So the, the salt has gone up because the governor signed a law saying that we had to use salt from this country, not from others, so Appalachia couldn't bid on the salt contract anymore. That combined with the new regulation that she wrote that says anything that's trucked under 50 miles, they have to pay for family wage, so it's going to put the cost up even more because we get it from Cargill, it's not from Albany. 
which was under 50 miles, so we have to pay the prevailing wage instead of the parking rates we pay now. Uh, so that's, that's, again, it's going to fluctuate. Um, I put it a little bit high because I don't know the impact of the trucking and what's going to cost, but um, I could definitely <coughs> Yeah, you're talking See, about. Get about the same budget as last year, and again, if we don't spend that money, it comes back to you. All. You're talking about just over, just just over ten percent increase. Yeah. Plus the trucking that we don't even know what it's going to be. Yet. We talked about it at the superintendent's meeting. Uh, the it's ten percent. It's going to happen. So fifty mile, anything under fifty miles has to be prevailing rate for anything truck in, which is going to be. It's going to raise the cost exponentially, powered by 50, 70 percent. Melinda, and we don't have a 10 wheeler, so we can't go up and get it ourselves. So yeah. We'll what it. do you all think? I, you know, my feeling is that if we do the 180,000 and it's not being spent, the whole thing it does come back to us. Mm -hmm. it's not gonna, you know, so maybe just uh, be safe and, and go with that way, knowing that fact that. Uh, Whatever was budgeted is going to come back as a, as a fund balance at the end of the year. Okay. I'd rather, not keep, I'd rather not uh, fall short. So what do you all think? Is that a, that's a motion? I agree. Uh, is there a second? Second. So. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so adopting all of those changes um, brings us to one million eight hundred and forty six thousand and seventy five dollars that includes employee benefits um right now we have um 1.5 um in in real property taxes do you all want to keep that level and add money from the fund balance to bridge that gap or i would like, I would like that yes we're going to be getting i'm going to before I leave tonight, I'm going to grab that check. I'm going to run it up. That's going to be 169. We'll pay them tomorrow again. I'm going to try to get that in, but we won't get that back until the first quarter of 2024. But that's going to be close to uh, you know what we get back from our chips funding and whatever we don't get back, we'll we'll roll over and use for next year. So, because this year I got a late start, I usually like to start paving in May and June. And this year I didn't get to start paving until so a couple would, weeks ago. So I would like to ask. Um, I would like to ask if you would prepare your 284 agreement and have it ready for the town board in January, please. I don't know what the roads are going to look like until the first. Well, I mean, I mean, I'll do it. Here, here's John the thing. John asked me to do it one time too, and we had to change it all. Time. Well, it. but the thing is, it's it's usual for towns town highway supers to do an amended 284. Yeah. That's expected. So you put in what you think, and then if you may need to make an right. amendment, we make an amendment. It's just been practice um, throughout the county that everybody submits it at the, you know, March, April. But I can do it in January. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think it'll alleviate some bumpiness if we can have it earlier. Yeah. And I mean, if you have to amend it, you amend it. That's, that's not a big deal. So are we looking to pull this out of the, any kind of difference out of the general fund? Yeah. Okay. So um, I'd like to propose that we at least go back up to keep the tax levy flat, mm -hmm. yeah. which would be $1,519,100. Um, we have two options. We can pull the full amount of difference from the fund balance, or we can raise property taxes a bit. <laughs> Fun dollars. I, I would, I would do a one percent increase. You look like a hero given this financial situation that we're in. Um, I, I, I mean, yes, the, yes, the, the yeah. I'd there. like to ask. I mean, I, you already I made would love comments. for Tim to weigh yeah, in. Okay, you Tim. You made some comments you're about. On. But I think the inflationary climate that yeah. we're in right now. We should have thought of that. What, what was the uh, what was the ultimate ending number of the 2024 appropriations for highway? 1846. Yeah, 1846. Uh, and last year it was. One eight five three five seven nine. So 
it's relatively flat, a little bit down there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what do we have in fund balance for, are you saying you don't maintain any fund balance in highway, or do you have fund No, balance there is there is fund balance yeah. in highway. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I was confused by yeah. the general fund thing. Yeah. So, um, do we know how much is in the fund? Maybe $15,000 increase. If you bought 1%, right? In the property tax. In the property tax, but that's not the question. No. We're just looking at what the difference is. I know it. I, I mean, there's. Mark, you want to keep everything flat? I'll pay it. The rate of inflation that we've seen. We should have worried about that. I don't want to make a statement here. We, also, we've, kept, we've kept that general fund way higher than the controller's office ever told us to. For instance, when we were close to $9 million in there, with a 10% interest rate increase on that money, we lost, we lost buying power on that money because we had too much money in there. That could have bought three plow trucks because we didn't have the money invested properly. So we've already had way more than we should have had in there. We should look into NIPAS. We need to look at the other investment things that this town has never looked into. We had three different, we had different money put in money markets at the rate of 1.3 and a 1.6. Both times looking at that as to be a proud of when inflation went up more, both those all those years than the than the interest rate that we're getting on those money markets. Granted, it was still better than before when we we're basically making nothing on interest rate for those millions of dollars. And now we are. So I understand your comment of to raise its raise the taxes, but we already have enough in that general fund to start spending it, which we should have spent a lot of this money earlier, like you stated before. I think that's it. He's, he's Why well, spend it when you put it in for a highway garage capital fund? What? And you don't have to bond as much. I just want the people to understand that are left here. 326000 Is that? Is that? Well, like $326,975. That's the difference. That's the difference. And that difference can come from the fund balance. That's fine, I, if that's what you all want to do. Well, well, we need we need some guidance here from. What, what's the three hundred twenty-six thousand? That's the increase. That's the oh, that boy. would be the amount of money that we'd pull from the unassigned fund balance to bridge the gap for the increased highway budget. We're going to hear about that. So before the original number was one seven four seven five six five. Right. Okay. And, and you had estimated revenues of 250000 and... Yes, but Highway Superintendent is suggesting that we don't, we don't include those. Why wouldn't you include those? Election season. Why wouldn't we include the estimated reven revenues? You said not to include those, the 250000 In COVID, they took 20% away. If something goes south, right. you know, God forbid, you know, war spreads in the Middle East or something else happens catastrophic, that money's not a guarantee. Okay. It's not a guarantee from the... From the yeah, it's not a bird in the hand. I mean, yeah, I guess, I guess my, my two We usually cents. slip 50% in there, and then when we got the extra, then we would put it in an appropriated fund balance for the following year to keep the tax rate down. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, think, I think before I would prompt raising taxes, I, I would not take away the estimated revenues that have been consistent from year to year. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, if I if I take that in, what I'm seeing is there's about a $10,000 difference. Right. Okay. Okay, yep. so, so what I would say is uh, I would true it up to what the prior year was, which mm -hmm. is just about that that $10,000 difference. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I don't think you need to use any fund balance at all. That it would just be flat year over year. Mm -hmm. Good point. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's that's Thank you. that's what we'll do. Okay. Um, all right. As as for the rest of it, you all are okay with um, where things are at with the general fund balance. Um, yeah. The the revenue projections. You're not. I mean, you heard I feedback know. tonight. No. I I mean. I don't. I, as I said from the start, I don't have any additional comments to make. Um, Mr. Baum, do you have any concerns yeah, over revenue there. projections? I, I'm 
I'm so concerned about that interest in earnings where you know, we've had 25000 now we have 140000 I, I know what you said, Melinda. I talked to the banker. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a huge difference. It's, it's a big... I mean, do you want to... Does the town board want to decrease that amount? No. I don't <coughs> want to decrease it. One percent of $5 million, I believe, is quickly 50 grand. Yes. yes. So when interest rates goes up from 1%, which it's... It was 1% for the first six months of this year. That's true. And it went up to 1.65 in July. Mm -hmm. And in, in August, it went up to 2.25. Yep. Yep. So the amount of money you're literally seeing in right now is actually lower than it's going to be next year. Mm -hmm. Because for half the year, it was at 1%. Yeah. And we've already been told by everybody and the bank that it's going to stay that. And the county company. So that explains interest rate and the amounts. It's pretty simple math. Mm -hmm. um, as far as department expenses and things, everybody's okay with yeah, what's in there. Sense. I mean, I'm, you know, I do the best I can, I right? But those I'm are the, best, I mean, the best estimates that you presented. That's, that's what I mean, it is. Yeah, I, don't, estimate. I don't think. I mean, I mean, you shave, you cut. I mean, you've done what I think non-accounting mind would have probably <laughs> done. So. Next year, Tim, can budget. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I exactly. That's good. All right. All right. So if, yeah. um, I will make these changes that we okay. discussed and send you all a revision. Okay. And all right, then, um, then, we can, then we can go back to it. Then talk. Well, I mean, I would imagine that revision will be more or less the final revision. I mean, if you all are comfortable with I mean, anything you're not comfortable with, let's try to hash that out now. I think it's fantastic. I've worked on the last four budgets with supervisors, and this is by far the best I've seen. I mean, it's, you know, the reality is it isn't, um, well, you, can't you know, predict the future nothing, right? Any. Nothing is perfect, so. Well, you can't predict the future no, with any. Can't. No, a no. meteor could hit us tomorrow, and we won't have to worry about anything. <laughs> Okay, so barring the meteor, I think we're good. <laughs> so, any other concerns, Mr. Bonds? Then let's pass. I'm still, I'm, look, I'm still looking at this. Melinda, what would you, would you like us to, to vote on it tonight? Yeah. Is that what you want? Because we have vote a on, deadline. Vote on the budget with changes. With the changes? With the changes, yeah. I'm good with that. Or Party should we chief. have all the... Want? Just to meet again. I, I think I would like to issue the revision okay. of what yeah. we agreed on. Okay. And then look at it again. And then yeah. um, come back at it on November 14th. I mean, we do have to have this passed by yeah, November. before the 20th. Before the 20th of November. Yes. I think we can do it. I think we're very close. I think that's fine. Yeah. Um, so you're going to just send us the revised Yeah, budget. I'll make all these revisions. Thank okay. you. And I'll get them off to you by the end of the week. Thanks okay, for cool. all your hard work. Thank you.